Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and how are you guys all doing today? Welcome home to your favorite smite place on the internet, hopefully. And if not, then I'm glad you're checking out my videos anyway and supporting me with a view. Today we're going to be taking a look at Kabraken, who is a guardian in smite, but I'm actually going to be playing him a little differently. That's right, I'm going to be playing Kabraken as a full-out damage mage, although I will be building some health items on him, and the crazy thing about this is that this build, if you if you want to play Kabraken, this build will allow you to literally one to two shot your opponents. That's right. If it's a mage, an assassin, or a hunter, you will be able to literally one to two shot them uh, with this build once you get late game. Now, the key is getting late game, and you still have to play the game to get there, which means you're going to have to play patiently. Like, right here, I see the Humbots aggressing onto my Chiron. I'm going to have to make sure that I'm not taking too much minion damage. You know, starting with an item like uh, like the tier 2 version of basically the option to go with uh, Warlock Sash, which is what I'm going to be taking, a stacking item allowing Allowing me to get some health uh, and some mana as the Thanatos comes around trying to gank me, but I do anticipate that. In fact, I had the idea to go do that on the right lane myself. So, great minds think alike, or I don't know, dead minds. We'll see what happens at the end of this game if that Thanatos stays alive with some of my bursts. I'm telling you, he just may not. You guys are in for a treat today. This is a great build, and I'm going to be showing you guys really a look at one of the gods that I have not looked at very often in my Smite career, uh, in my Smite history. But what I will tell you guys is that. I've noticed a lot of people have not played Kabraken lately as well. I know a few people who stick with Kabraken, but when I bring this Kabraken out, either in Arena or Clash, a lot of people don't know how to deal with it. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about his abilities and why they're really good, especially his number one and a couple other things, um, and why his damage is almost guaranteed to 100 to 0 somebody. So again, this is a two-shot Kabraken build I'm going to be showing you guys. Uh, it's unbelievable. Let's get into the game. You see, we just got first blood there by my man Primetheus, um, and... You know, Odin, again, a very strong guardian uh, in Clash. Not only that, in every mode right now. Just because, you know, obviously the reduction in, uh, in, in the ability to combat blink out of his ring uh, by basically the taking away of combat blink uh, is, is a really big reason Odin got strong because if you have no jump or leap, there is no way to get out of Odin's ring. And of course, Aegis and Beads, they are not as effective as they used to be. Sanctuary and Purification, now they are renamed as I totally whiffed that number two. I think I was just a little anxious to clear these minions, thinking that they might have a rotation coming over. So I wanted to get it away quickly, but I ended up missing. Always uh, always try and land your abilities, guys. That is a good tip on how to be a better smite player. Just, just land your abilities. How about, how about that? Uh, but I don't get it yet, but I do have my full Warlock Sash there, uh, which will give me some magical power, a lot of base health and mana, and then health and mana every stack uh, that I pick that up. Actually, I believe health and magical power every stack. I, I'm not exactly sure. You have to read the tooltip on that, but you're basically uh, getting a lot more health with this item and more magical power as you build up these stacks. So I'll be grabbing my first three here at this back camp, which you want to in Clash. Make sure you're getting as much as possible. That means you're maximizing the amount of experience potentially given to your team. If you let those stay up for about a minute and a half, well, that's uh, basically a cycle of back camps that you wasted. You could have had two back camps in the time that you had one if you had someone just aware of that so be careful because that could be the difference if you do that four or five times in a level difference that could be almost a level difference between you as the thantos tries to come on me but i hit him with a number one and then a number two basically uh stun locking him into taking half of his life and damage there and let's talk about what kabraken's abilities are as you see the ultimate comes up i'm going into the humbots but he actually ends up jumping away the zeus is here i don't have full passives on my stacks so i cannot stun him yet he gets some damage off it's not enough to prime uh the Actually, is, he, is that Prime playing uh, Poseidon? I have no idea, but the Zeus ults, I have to get out of here. It's actually Epic Gamer Ben who went in with that Poseidon, knocking him back. Prime going in on the, uh, on the Zeus, but it doesn't matter because he's got a Capri ult on top of him. The Thanatos coming onto the Odin with a little bit of a silence, but Epic Gamer Ben with that Poseidon has a double kill, taking out, I believe, not only the Zeus, but the Neath as well. Go ahead, do your thing, Epic Gamer Ben. That's what I like to see. Those Poseidon, Kraken, so deadly, especially in Clash. I find great mage to play in Clash. I almost don't play him a lot because for me it's very simplistic to do well with him. But you know what? He is a good guy. If you want to try him out, one of the, one of the best beginner gods. And it's definitely if you want to learn Clash, uh, he'll be able to scale really well after he gets a kill or two. And he's he's good farm. Good, just play play beside him. He's good. He's good. He, he's good in Clash. Um, 
So uh, let's talk about Cabracken's ability. So I, I let you guys know that we can get in the good stuff throughout the entire game here. Uh, well, Cabracken's passive is called Shadow Zone. What it basically means is if you're around him in the Shadow Zone, I don't, I don't know why it's called Shadow. I guess it has something to do with his lore. I'm sure. I'm sure it makes sense, but. Sounds like, you know, the, the Shadow Zone. Welcome to the Shadow Zone. Anyways, that's that's not really a joke. I just keep saying that over and over again. Uh, you take 5% reduction in damage, which is good. So you take less damage. Uh, his first ability is called Seismic Crush. Now, let me talk to you about this. Basically, Cabracken becomes enraged. He increases his movement speed, and he gains 70% increased attack speed. He also does not suffer from the basic, uh, basic attack penalty. And what that means is that he can continually throw his basic attack out without slowing down. So you can see him basically throwing his number one. Sometimes you'll see a Cabracken miss his number one and he'll, he'll still keep moving as fast. That is why, because he doesn't suffer his basic attack penalty. I see the Kepri rotating there and I'm actually targeting the Kepri here just to try and make sure the Kepri doesn't have anything. But I see the Thanatos coming out and I do want to get away from that, especially Odin's ring. It looks like the Nox silence does help the Thanatos in stopping to pursue me. I've got 98 health or less. They are still coming for me here. And I, although the Thanatos execute is down, I'm a little wary in case someone tries to dive me here. They do have a couple of characters that can definitely do some damage. Of course, that Neath ultimate as well going towards me might be something that could take me out. But now I've got my Warlock Sash and I've got my Penetration Boots, the second item in this two-shot build. Uh, this is going to allow you to really just devastate people. Um, and so that is really helping me there. So is number one really good? Increase your movement speed. You chase people down. The other thing that's really great about it, and especially now because you're seeing a lot of Neaths, right? Uh, Neaths, Roots, Slows, they don't, they don't do anything. When he's in his number one, he cannot be slowed. He cannot be rooted. So Neath will literally shoot a spirit arrow at you thinking it will stop. Most Neaths do not know that is the case. And they will waste their spirit arrow on you. It will do the damage, but it will not slow you. As you see, I am almost dead here. I am down to 175 health. Oh my god, I get the stun. And the damage from the ultimate takes him down. Oh dear god, Yosefson. I am so sorry there, but you messed with a Kabraken with full passive stacks on his number two. And that is a perfect segue. Thank you, post previous rain day for playing that way so I can segue the current rain days <laughs> discussion area. If you guys want to know, yes, these are recorded after the game sometimes. I do have the same game sound and I will make sure to keep it so that I feel sometimes like I am in the mode. But yes, some of these, a lot of these audios are recorded after the fact, so I can just get better audio for you guys. It's, you know, I don't want you to hear my keyboard clicking in the background and stuff like that. And I can also just get better gameplay because I'm focusing on the game here and uh, better commentary overall and discussion. So a lot of times you will see that. A lot of people ask me that question, and that is the case, guys. Also, you know, if you want to ask me more questions, you want to get in touch with me, you can follow me at Twitter at Rain Day Gaming. It's very simple, Twitter at Rain Day Gaming. Gaming and uh, you can connect with me. I've had a lot of people ask me simple questions like, hey, how do you build this guy? You got any ideas for what I should do with this? And, you know, I just hit them with a quick answer because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really nice way to give somebody uh, a quick response. As you see, the Zeus trapped here. It doesn't look good for him. I pull out my Trimble, my number three, and the Thanatos is running away. The Zeus goes down to Southern Comfort there. The Kepri and the Neath going onto our Poseidon, but the Neath doesn't see me in the back line. I go on her with my one and my two. I save my four because I knew she was going to backflip out of that. That does avoid the damage quite well, but I start the Trimble on the Kepri. The Kepri, however, dashes into what it looks like to be a minion. Not able to finish that dash off. The Hunt boss is going, but I do not have my, uh, I do not have my stun available. The Thanatos gets a double kill and it's time for me to retreat here. I do not have enough to do this. I see they are going after me. I fake like I might go left and I continue going right. They are still pursuing me, but again, now with my full stacks, I have the ability to stun that Thanatos. And our Chiron here, Spectre 294, able to get a couple of hits onto the Thanatos, slow him down. He goes into his ultimate. The Aegis comes out from the Thanatos. Will it finish him off? Oh no, I feel like he has to have a masterful shot, but he doesn't because he just used it to get that Thanatos into kill range. Of course, as a, as a Chiron, you want to use your ultimate before you use Masterful Shot, if you're going to use it. Why is that, guys? Because then you can use your Masterful Shot afterwards. That's right. Your big arrows, those big arrow shots from your ultimate, they do apply uh, your mark. So that means you'll be able to Masterful Shot them with the two, because typically people will escape that with very little health, and uh, your two will basically just finish them off. So, uh, the number two, thanks for not using the segue I gave myself here. I, I got into all this other stuff, but the, the number two ability on Kabraken is really cool as well. Basically, 
it gives you pass it his pass it has a passive effect one of the only abilities that has a passive effect one of the like not not just a passive this ability has a passive effect it's very very interesting um it basically as they has his shields take damage as he takes any kind of damage so minions archers hitting you uh you see like uh you know a, a minion warrior hitting you or just a basic attack or abilities from somebody else you see the capri over here hanging out he basically takes uh damage and his his shield as you'll see it'll become pinker and as that those pink little moments, those those fragments on his shield uh, become full, as I see, I'm here. I'm waiting to go potentially onto the Thanatos. He does not see me coming now. Once they get full, as you see, I just got a fragment, a pink fragment there, uh, and I will get some more most likely in this fight. I go onto the Thanatos. I hit him with my number one, my number two, and I get the damage from my ultimate. The Odin comes down, and of course, the Transcendence. I'm not sure if he's building Transcendence, but the uh, what is that thing called from Kyra? I forget what his number one is called. Uh, oh. Oh gosh, I forget. I can't believe it. I'm sorry. I'm going after the Neat there. She does a great Aegis, and I'm forced to get out. Chiron using his ultimate there to try and finish her off, but it's not enough. And I cannot remember for the life of me what Chiron's number one is called. I am very, very sorry about that, guys. But anyways, I'm sure a lot of you know how what it's called, what it does. Basically, that finished up our Thanatos there before he could get into the air. But the Zeus is here. He's going under the Chiron. I gotta stop him. I do it with my number one and two, and the trembles are coming out. They finish off the Zeus. That's my second kill. I'm 2 0 and 5. The Hunbot's still pursuing our Chiron, but he's hitting his basic attacks. And the number two, the masterful shot, takes out Anton the Knight and sends him crying back home. Nox jumps into me, and I don't think that Thanatos wants to dive down. He decides to go onto the Chiron, but it's a bad decision because he gets stun locked, silenced, and root, rooted into a Poseidon Whirlpool cripple, cripple, a Nox Siphon Darkness, a Cabrat and one two combo and uh it's just bad news oh yeah under a tower as well so that was just not the best thing i've got my ultimate there that capri you are going nowhere baby he he survives himself as you see there's the basic attacks that are happening i'm suffering no penalty and i have that attack speed bonus there uh i believe by 70 percent so that is uh that is a perfect example of what i meant by how a cabracket can literally just keep swinging that basic attack when he's activated so if you see that you want to run away <laughs> you want to run away from a cabracket as much as can so what happens when i build those stacks on my shield basically i gain protections so that means once it's maxed up i gain a maximum of eight protections per stack so every time i get hit i'm gaining an extra eight protections up to five stacks which means i'm getting 40 potential protections uh as long as those stacks are active now they have a little bit of a cool down like they have a, a refresh so if you keep refreshing them you can stay in the fight with those stacks until of course you use them on an opponent which you just saw there now what happens when he has full stacks now you have those 40 protections active but if you decide to use it offensively you will then stun an enemy so that means if you use your number one to go towards an enemy and start like seismic crush basically your number one to go towards an enemy and your refraction shield is full uh passive then you will basically be able to stun them with your number one cause the damage as well as then stun them with your number two immediately after stun locking them basically from being able to do anything and that is basically why Cabracken is so deadly and and so surprising to play against because he can do so much damage without you having the ability to actually do anything else you see the damage can still come out on the number two but it just will not stun the Capri here trying to do something you see the damage coming out there as well the triples trying to get the Thanatos it is not enough although the Polynomicon was activated they have done a good job of helping this uh, Thanatos to get away, but oh no, he sees Odin coming for him, and he's like, all right, well, I might as well go back to where I knew I was going to die. I don't want to get bird bomb. You see the triples coming out as well onto the Zeus, but it's not enough. I'm chasing after him. Somebody hits Sprint, and I'm able to go ahead and finish him off. That's a double kill for me, and the Kepri's in a bad spot here. I'm chasing after him. He's getting crippled by the Whirlpool. I decided to go with my number three, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but as you can see, a very, very hard to run out of that. The Hunbots is here. I'm guessing we're going to secure the Kepri, but the Hunbots is a bad, bad thing, and he decides to go and blink back after his monkey onto the Poseidon, but he's able to get away. My goodness. Jeez, Hunbots. That, is, that was very daring. Those That was daring. By the way, guys, if you know Ben Day, his book, The Daring Days of Theodore Maxwell, just came out today. So if you guys want to check that out, that's my cousin. He's also a, a friend on the stream. And a lot of you guys know him. Daring Days of Theodore Maxwell. You guys go ahead and pick that up today. 99 cents on Amazon. Very cool story. If you got a, a lot of younger kids around in your life, you could show that to them. Or if you're even an adult, you'll enjoy it as well. But Danny tells you, I got bitter, bigger matters to focus on. I got my Aegis available. The Odin Ring comes out. The Neath tries to finish me off. But again, the Aegis takes away that 
damage, and of course, that's called Sanctuary this season. Uh-oh, the Thanatos is up in the air. He's chasing me in Nox. Holy crap, I gotta get out of here. I decided to run around. I'm just accepting it, trying to basically say, oh my god, he missed. He missed his silence as well. The Nidero comes out. I've got my ultimate. Can I finish him off? I get the kill. Oh my god, it's 5-0 and 10. How did that happen? Okay, let me tell you my thought process. I was running away from Nox so that he had to choose one or the other. He was going to choose me because I was closer. And apparently, he tried to go for Nox for a second, realized he, he wasn't going to get to her, decided to go for me, and didn't have enough distance to catch up with me because I didn't try and fake him out. I was just accepting the death. A lot of times, people will go like, I'm going to go forward. Oh, I'll turn around and run back, like trying to juke out a Thanatos. Not too easy to do, especially if the Thanatos is playing patiently. So I guess it just worked out perfectly. He got nobody. He missed his silence. Oh, dear gosh. And now, uh, it looks like the Kepri and the Humbots trying to get this. The Soul Reaper procs onto the Kepri, and so he's low. He's going to have to get out in a second. But the Humbots jumps back in again. What a daring Humbots. But the damage from my number one with the Polynomicon eliminates his life bar. He is out. Oh, my goodness. And the Kepri's out of this fight as well, especially if they try and have any engagement. He's not going to be uh, helping that. He's got to go back to base. So it looks like uh, just a very, very dominating performance so far. 6-0-10, guys. You guys are seeing the power of Kabrakin. Just the stuns, the potential. Of course, in this meta, CC is very important. So the fact that you guys are, are witnessing Kabrakin doing well is not surprising because Kabrakin has some very damaging single target CC. They call him Fat Loki for a reason, guys, because he can stun lock and damage somebody to the point where he almost kills them, 100 to zeros them. Now, most builds, you're going to have a build that gives you a little bit more health and protections. This is literally like a full damage build, and so you're seeing the potential of that when you have somebody playing Kabrakin a little bit more carefully and a little bit more aware. You see, what a daring Hunbots. I decided to go for the Trimble because he cannot have a jump available. I do miss him, however, but he's got to be building full cooldown or something. How is his jump up so quickly? I feel like he just jumped into me there, but I am waiting. I'm kind of baiting this out here. Uh, and again, again, this Hunbots. I'm like, dude, Dude, really? Are you seriously going to blink into me again? Now the Zeus is in a problem because you know what? I've got Tremble available. I've got my number one available. And that's a, that's a dead Zeus if I ever saw one. Epic Gamer Ben picks that one up with his cripple on his Whirlpool. But you just see the damage coming out from the Polynomicon there. I'm not even sure the Soul Reaver activated on that. So that was just... Polynomicon. You guys are going to see the damage. It's insane in the future. We're trying to go ahead and get this Phoenix here, but the Thanatos is trying to defend as well. But the Kepri activates a weakening curse. The, Th the Chiron ultimate comes out. I get my one-two punch onto the Neath, but she avoids death by being able to go ahead and backflip out of that. One of the characters I played against a lot this meta is Neath, and I will tell you that she can backflip a lot of times if you don't do it immediately out of the damage of your ultimate. But not only that, a lot of times you will have to use your 1, 2, 3 earlier on before you get your full Soul Reaver proc, and before you have some other items such as uh, Spear of Desolation, which I'll put in this build, you are going to then have uh, to kill her uh, with your ultimate your 1, 2, ultimate, and then your 3 to finish her off. That is pretty much what's going to happen. You might have to throw your whole kit, but she can backflip out of uh, some of the damage there. So that's that's why it's a little difficult. You kind of got to catch Neath off guard because uh, you may not be able to 100-0 her. She's the one who is a little bit tough because that backflip happens so quickly. You know what I mean? Um, now, the other thing that I really want to mention and showcase to you guys is that, uh, again, like I said, this is a full damage build. So this is not the build that you might use if you're trying to... Be, a, be a, a, a very proficient guardian. Oh, the Thanatos. Where are you going, man? You got trapped in the ring. That was a bad spot. I'm just hitting my trembles up, but it looks like the Kepri with the saves. Oh, man. Dang, Kep. That was a nice save, bro. Through the wall. The Neath is here. I'm basically trying to go on her, but she backflips away as well. Again, very hard to catch on that Neath, especially because she can throw her Spirit Arrow and, of course, try to root you, but, of course, you will not get rooted uh, if your number one is active. Now, let's finish talking about his abilities. Number three, Trimmers basically kind of like uh, pulling you towards the center, kind of like uh, Poseidon's Whirlpool. It'll pull you towards the center, and you can pretty much do it for 10 seconds. The maximum is 10 seconds. It just depends on how much mana you have. You will basically go till 10 seconds, or you will go till your, ma till your mana runs out, if that is if that is the amount of time. Now, it looks like Epic Gamer Ben gets taken out, but the damage with Poly, not actually with Soul Reaver and my ultimate there, Oh my god, eliminates that Hunbots. The jump from uh, Primetheus is perfect because now I can go ahead onto the Neath if she stays around uh, because that jump is going to be on cooldown most likely. But aside, you know what? Let's get a safe Cold Fury here. Let's just take take the take the money lead. And I appreciate that because now I can start getting this build shown off for you guys. And we are pretty much at full build late game, but we've got one more item to go. Let's see if we can get there. Now we've got... Uh, 
Number three, pretty easy. You want to use that to secure a lot of kills or just in a team position. You want to basically put people in a bad spot. It's going to be very hard to get out of uh, the middle of it. So if you catch people at the edge, you might be able to get a couple of damage. Later on in this game, you'll be seeing me hit mages with my number three. Each tick of that damage will be for about 293 damage. Oh my god, and the Neath is obliterated. That is what I'm talking about. She didn't even have time to backflip. It didn't process in her mind that the damage coming out on her would be that close to killing her. Look at this Zeus right now oh my goodness the one hit can you believe that that hit i have to tell you how much damage it just did to Zeus in that little bit of time you guys will not believe it that was over 2000 damage that i just did to that zeus with a full polynomicon full soul reaver proc 100 stacks of warlock sash full mage boots and not even a six item that was over 2000 damage i believe 2003 damage to be real after i calculated that I cannot. I mean, literally, the first hit with the Soul Reaver proc, Polynomicon proc, it took uh, pretty much 90% of his life away. This is what this build will do. Trust me, guys. This is crazy fun. This is so cool. You got to try this thing out. Kabraken is like that guy that people do not expect right now. You see, Thanatos, he doesn't expect me, but you know what? The damage is not the same. Why is that? Because he's building freaking tanky because he's gotten killed all game. I didn't realize that. I wasted my ultimate on him, but I didn't realize he was building tanky. Now, of course, if anyone starts building tanky, this is not for tanks, right? This is for the mages, the squishies. You can kill the mages and the squishies really easily. Tanks, you may not want to focus like this because you won't be able to really bring them down like that. Your tremble will probably do much more damage to the tanks because they'll be less mobile and, uh, of course, they'll be put in a bad spot because they'll just be taking that damage over time. His tremble can actually do 1,300 damage plus 700% of your magical power if you channel it for the maximum duration. So that's ridiculous. Now, of course, the last ability, his ultimate tectonic shift, uh, which is a big part of his combo when you're taking down mages. And with a normal build, like usually what I'll do is instead of... Um, uh, Polynomicon, or instead of this last item, I'll build, like, Voidstone, and that'll give me a little more tankiness, a little bit of penetration, uh, for, you know, reducing the magical protection of enemies, and what I'll do is I'll use my one, I'll two, and then I'll immediately four while they're in the sunlock, and that should kill most people, because the damage on your ultimate is great. 550 damage plus 70% of, uh, 70% of your magical power, which, when you're doing this build, or a build close to this, is quite a lot. You see I'm 9, 0, and 13 right now. We are pushing right lane. We are about to deicide here. It looks like we are close to getting uh, Neath down as well. Uh, she backflips away. The Kepri is here in a bad spot. I'm going after him. I'm trying to... Oh, man. What is this? Kep Who is this? Kepri Bolt? Like, Usain Kepri? What's, what's going on? Okay, I take him out with my ultimate there. Had to just finish it. I didn't want to use it. The Zeus is trying to avoid me now. But guess what, Zeus? I'm coming for that ass. Give me that... Oh, you're trying to run away? Give me that ass, Zeus. Give me that. 279 damage per tremble. I can do that for 10 seconds. That is over. That was near 3,000 damage if anyone was able to stay around for that. But, of course, they will be dead much too soon. Here you go, guys. A Kabraken two-shot build gameplay here in Clash 11, 0, and 13. Go ahead and try this thing out and enjoy and let me know what you guys think about it. It's absolutely nuts. I've been having so much fun with Kabraken. Kabraken to me is like, uh, it is like the Pharaoh when all of these plagues kept happening. He was pretty much like, dude, Moses came up and was like, yo, I'm telling you, man, some sh is happening. Some stuff is going down and he's like, oh, blood in the river. Okay, whatever. Like locusts. All right, locusts come around all the time. I, this can't be God telling me I need to let, you know, these people go. But, you know, after a while, you're just like, and that's how people are like, they're like, wait, did I just get 100 to 0? Like, that couldn't happen. Somebody else had to put some damage on me. Like, this this can't be happening, right? This, this is Kabrakin. Nobody plays Kabrakin. Like, what? I don't see Kabrakin anywhere. But, dude, it's for real. Eventually, you will figure it out. Eventually, the community is going to figure it out very soon here, especially our community, that Kabrakin is nasty. He is one of the best arena picks right now, in my opinion. Uh, he's a good pick in Clash. He's not the best. You have to play him very very carefully, but if you let him get going, he can get going like crazy. I usually tell people I'm playing as a mage, so pick a guardian or pick someone else if you want. Pick a warrior for sure because I'm not guarding. I'm playing like a mage when I do a Kabraken build right now and it tends to work. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this build here. You guys can see the player damage as well. 25k, even out damaging a Zeus and that's saying something even if he's behind. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this here at Rain Day Gaming. And as always guys, remember to never give up Never stop gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.